I want you to go back in time a little bit and I want you to think about coordinate geometry. If you get given a line like this, okay, and if you want to find out, okay, that line has been inclined to the axis, what angle has it been inclined at? You can use trig, like we're in right now, to find out what that angle is. Okay? Um, all you need to do to supply a little bit of extra information is, to use trig, you need a triangle, don't you? There's lots of different triangles I can put in there. In fact, I can put almost any triangle I like. Watch this. If I drop down a perpendicular line to the axis from any point along the line, okay, you can see what I've created with my vertical and my horizontal is a, um, a representation of gradient, right? Because this is rise over run. So if we go ahead and label that, because I live in a right angle triangle, which trigonometric ratio connects rise and run? It's tan theta, isn't it? So here, the gradient by definition is rise over run, but because it also lives in a right angle triangle, that means that the gradient is not just rise over run, it's 10 here. So this is a familiar result. You've seen this before. Okay? So now we're going to extend it and say, if you don't want the angle with the axis, but if you want the angle between two lines that are off at funny angles, each of them, like these two, how do you work that out? So here's what I'm after. This theta here. Okay. So to help me work this out, what I'm going to do is compare this problem to the problem that you just solved. Right there, at the point where the two lines meet. You can imagine that, well it's sort of parallel to this, isn't it? Right? It's like that's where I'm measuring the angle. So what I'm going to add is a sort of horizontal line in here. It's parallel, okay? because then I can measure using this what these individual angles are and then they combine to make theta. So watch this. If I put this horizontally across like that. Okay? If I give these lines some names, let's call this guy over here line 1 and this one line 2. Each one I can work out its angle independently using this fact. I can work out each line's gradient and then I can chuck it into here. Okay? So now if I include, what's the right color to use? This one. If I call this big angle here alpha and this one under here beta, then what's an expression for the angle I actually want, which is theta? It's just going to be the big one take away the little one, right? It's just the difference between those two, okay? So watch. If I just say, if I want theta, I'm going to have to get to there through 10, okay? Just like I did up here. 10 theta is equal to, by definition, tan of alpha minus beta. That's what you told me to compare, right? But now, after this morning, I have an expansion for this, right? What's our expansion for the difference uh, of angles when it comes to 10? Do you remember? Tan alpha, alpha, alpha minus tan beta, beta, and then over, over one, one plus. plus. Okay, so, oops, that's a plus, not a t. Okay. Now here's the lovely thing about this, right? Knowing that this is true, tan alpha, for instance, tan alpha is just the gradient of this line, isn't it? Just like tan beta was the gradient of that line. Tan beta is the gradient of the shallower line, the, um, the second line, right? So I can write this all in terms of gradients, not in terms of tans at all. It's going to be one gradient. I'm just giving it a name based on the names I've given the lines. Take away another gradient. On the bottom, I've got that. Okay, does that make sense? Do you see what I've done? So now I can go directly to this angle between two lines. So long as I know the gradients between, or the gradients of rather, those two lines. Okay. Let's just give a quick example. Um, these lines, what do they look like? Let's say, um, let's give us some equations. Uh, let's call this one like y equals, I don't know, three x. That's pretty steep, goes to the origin, you go with that. Uh, let's keep this one pretty simple, let's call it like x plus, I don't know, x plus two, something like that, because it doesn't start at the origin, okay? What's the gradient of each line? It's three and one. See this plus two? 
what difference does it make when I'm working out the angle between the two lines? That plus two. What difference does it make to this theta? And the answer is it actually doesn't make a difference to its size. It just would, like if I move this line down here, it would still be the same magnitude. It would just be in a different spot. I don't care about that. I just care about the size of the angle. Right? So now watch what happens if I just have a go as an example over here. If I say 10 theta, you'll need your calculator for this in a second, by the way. If I say 10 theta is equal to, what's on the top? This is going to be 3 take away 1 divided by what? 1 plus 3, plus three times 1, which is 3. So that gives me that. So on the top I have got 2. On the bottom I have 4. So apparently 10 theta, where theta is the angle between two lines, is a half. Now I don't want 10 theta, I want theta. So can you, on your calculator, you don't want this, you're going to have to go shift 10 and then you're going to supply that. Can someone get me to the nearest degree? Uh, 26. 20, I think it rounds up to 27, doesn't it? Uh, approximately. What do you think? Does that look like 27 degrees? It does, right? It checks out. Now, this is not the only angle between the two lines. I've measured this one, the small one. Where else do you see that same theta, by the way? Where else is it? It's vertically opposite. You, you recognize that? There's theta here as well. So those two are the same. But then there's this other angle, right? What's the other angle? It's not acute. It's obtuse, right? This is just like the ambiguous case for the sine rule, if you recall that, right? So if you're asked for the obtuse angle, you'll find this out. And then how do you get the obtuse angle out of that? Yeah, you do 180 degrees minus that. You're looking for the supplement, aren't you? Okay. Far and away, what you're always asked for is the acute angle. So therefore, it's really easy. We just slap absolute value signs around it. Anyone tell me why absolute value signs give you the acute angle? Hmm. Do you guys remember this? You remember this, don't you? Right? If you are not trying to get confused with this guy, which is obtuse, right? Do you see the obtuse angle is offering this quadrant, right? Where 10 is negative. So if you restrict and you say, actually, I'm explicitly going to say 10 has to be positive. See that? That's what the absolute value does. It locks you into the first quadrant. Does that make sense? So therefore, you will get an acute angle out of that. Even if you do, instead of 3 take away 1, if you do 1 take away 3, all the numbers end up being the same size, it's just the negative. Now, before we leave this and I get you to write this down, there's one little trick you have to watch out for. See this guy here? M1, M2. You get into a little bit of trouble with fractions whenever your fractions have a denominator of zero. That makes things blow up, right? What value of M1, M2 would make the denominator zero? This is 1 plus M1, M2, right? So if M1, M2 equals what? Minus 1. Negative 1, you're in trouble, okay? Now here's my question. Why? Why is it that this causes trouble for this? Can anyone see it? It's a perpendicular line. Ah, if you have two lines and you multiply their gradients together, you get negative 1. That means the two gradients are negative reciprocals, aren't they? Which is what happens for perpendicular lines. Now that leads to the next question. What's the problem with perpendicular lines? What has this thing got to do with perpendicular lines? What? Nine. Is it 10 or defined at 90? Ah, yes. So if the angle between the two lines is 90 degrees, you're in trouble. Because 10, 90 lands you on an asymptote, doesn't it? Because cos 90 is 0. You're undefined. Okay? So because this depends on 10, like obviously lines can be perpendicular, but this is not going to find it for you. Right? You're going to have to look. You're going to have to recognize the gradients and not, not do this. You're just going to say they're perpendicular. Therefore, the angle between two lines is 90 degrees. And you full stop, go home. Okay? You don't need to use this high tech machinery. Okay? So why don't you get that down? You can draw these diagrams. They're very, very important. And then have this across on the side here. This is what you want to put in a nice big box. Along with the warning that if your lines are perpendicular, then don't go to all this effort to find some special angle. 
Just notice they're perpendicular, so the angle between two lines is 90. Okay?